So you should all be able to spawn here. As you spawn here, get beacons up for your squad so everybody else can get here too. Probably beacons up. Okay, we'll give it just a few seconds for everybody else to get here. Okay, this I is killed a the double cracker. stack. If you look on your map, it is a rectangle with three black chunks in it and a long black line. It's about the only way you can identify this building. It's very simple. It's got two floors which, duh, that's why it's called a double stack. But it's also got this nasty little cubby down here on the first floor. This is where enemies like to hide and gather up and kill everybody as they're coming down. It's nasty. Make sure you've got eyes on the cubby. This is not a building that it's good to hold from the stairs. You've got good line of sight. You can move up and down easily to shoot out this door here. You can move back up and hold the top door here. And this window that people like to shoot in, that's another nasty window, suicide window. But the biggest pitfall of this building is always the cubby. That's where they always come in, they amass in the cubby, pretty soon you've got 25 people in there that push out and wipe the whole thing. So make sure you do have coverage on that cubby, that they can't group up in there and create a push. Fairly simple building to hold though, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, sometimes this window here is open, sometimes it's not. Um, but it, it's a fairly simple one. Usually the point is right where I'm standing in this building, that's typically where it's at. So just watch that. You don't need to be standing on the point, but there's usually a lot of cover and different servers and the panels and everything. You can get some good cover from the windows and the doors to make sure they can't easily shoot in and kill you and push into the point. All right, let's move down here to the next building where the point is actually at here. Watch out for the galaxy and Sunder over there. Yeah, we got some guys coming for this base. That's alright, good luck to him. For dull purpose. Okay, this building here that we're in now where the point is, another one of those I'm not sure has a terribly specific name to it, but again, it's one of those that has a lot of doors and a lot of windows. So make sure there's coverage on them. Make sure you get people stationed at all levels. To watch everything, baby gates in the stairs. Right where I'm standing now is the typical place to put the router in this building, and it works pretty well. I mean, it's got a little bit exposed to that door there, but it's hard to, to hit, especially when you have baby gates around it. But it's kind of the meta to put the, the router here in this building because it does have, you know, once again, it's got built in protection because it's in a stairwell. But again, always get baby gates up, get your turrets up, make sure that you have people stationed around watching all doors and windows. And don't go outside, because the medics can't get you. But people don't leave this building as much as they leave the other building that we were at before. I don't know why. I don't know why that building is so appealing to leave, when that's like one of the number one buildings you don't want to leave when you're trying to hold it. I don't get it, but, you know, people, what can you do? So one thing with this base design specifically, where you have like this balcony up here with the uh, metal walls, um, you can actually put like your mana turret right here and a baby gate, and this is actually pretty good to sit with when you have an umbrella above you. Yep, make sure you've got a good view because the spawn room, we all came from that. We know where that's at. They're going to funnel through the double stack and across that balcony there and down there. Most of them. Some of them will go around the other side of the double stack and come through the first floor here. So as long as you kind of have all the points that they're more, more than likely going to come from, you're good on this building. And it's big enough that you can spread out and have... You know, maybe two squads downstairs, two squads upstairs, if you want to get that organized to watch all the doors and windows. Okay, we good? Any questions? Okay, let's move on. We're going to go to Aurora Mats. It's going to be the powerhouse that we're going to talk about there. Kara, how are we getting there? Um, 
so I was hoping, uh, Charlie, could you pull some Sunders from possibly uh, Esper's, Esper Research Station? If you I do see our presence, but you should be able to spawn there. Um, and then the rest of us, we're going to meet up at Warp Gate, um, and we're going to pull some uh, Valkyries, because we're going to practice a point drop. Yes, ma'am. And uh, Charlie, remember, protect your Sunder. Squad lead, please, uh, Black, if you could pull the... Um, Sunder, and then the rest of you please defend or ride in the Sunder along with him. Uh, so this uh, is to get some logistics up uh, from both bases. So this is covering kind of both of our both of our ways. So we're going to have a Sunder on the way there. We have a bunch of people going to be dropping on point. Uh, and this is just a really good way to get a platoon there. Notice how I'm saying not everybody pulls Sunders because sometimes there can be too many Sunders and we don't really need that many. So uh, and it's much uh, more efficient to get people there by Valkyries. So you can spawn into your uh, squad Valkyries through the map screen as well on the left hand side under deployment squad spawns. Go ahead and move out. Okay, yeah, but nobody jump in my Valkyrie because I'm a terrible flyer tonight. My control. <laughs> oh, once you're flying in the Valkyrie, make sure you're heading towards that big uh, yellow waypoint with the three stars. Yep, we're going to platoon waypoint. We are going to drop right on the building that's marked by platoon waypoint. has arrived. Yeah! Yay! So this is a, like I said before, this is a really good way to get your squad or your platoon set up and even some friendly set up as well. So we're dropping people on point, we're attacking point, um, we have people taking the point, and then we also have some people setting up their sunders, getting squad beacons up, um, and then we also have some friendly armor as well. So all good things to have when getting a, when trying to attack a base. Currently we own this base, but in a perfect world we're attacking and we take it and everything's good. <laughs> yep. Now if you look on your map, the way the powerhouse looks, it's got the two thick lines, it's got a blank spot coming out from that, and a blank spot coming off to the side. Nine times out of ten, the point is in the build in the room that I am in now, which is on the second floor. Most of the time this is where it is at. This way be pointed, um, whatchamacallit, Quartz Ridge, it's... Most powerhouses, this is where the point is at. Can be in the hallway or downstairs, too, though. Now, this room is called dubs because of these two double doors right here. Those are literally the dubs, but this room is generally referred to as dubs because, I mean, it's just, it's the room that those doors are in. But those back doors are the dubs, but this room is called dubs. If, you know, somebody says, push it dubs, Everybody floods into this room to hold these two doors to make sure they can't come in. Now sometimes it's attached to a banana building like this, sometimes it's not. But always these two doors are called dubs, and this room is referred to by the same way. So if dubs are getting hit, this is where you rush. As Black Dragon said, out here in the hallway connected to this room, sometimes the point is right where I'm standing, occasionally. Not very often, but it does sometimes show up here. So when the point is here, you want people to fan out. You want people in dubs. You want people holding these stairs, which is fat stairs. These ones that I'm standing at now. Pretty self-explanatory. And then back here, it's skinny stairs. Again, self-explanatory. So you want to make sure that the entrances to where the point are is covered. Make sure they can't sneak in because there are a lot of entrances in this building. This is another one where there's a lot of doors for them to come in. And these stairs here and those stairs back there are fantastic for mana turrets. And pop an NG on a mana turret here, and this door is fine. A couple of NGs of mana turrets on these stairs, like this one is here, one right next to it. These stairs are fine. Also, this line here that I'm standing behind is a perfect place to park your infantry. 
when people rush in, if you look down your ADS here, you'll get a headshot nine times out of ten without having your whole body exposed. And you can shoot them as they come up those stairs without risking so much of yourself. Also, okay, downstairs occasionally, the point is down here, like on Scarfield on Amherst that you all just left. I'm sure you're familiar with it. The point is right where I'm standing. Sometimes it's further back here. I think Heoka Kem, I believe it's back here. So again, you want to fan out, make sure the stairs are held, make sure you got people blocking using the servers, watching these doors, position some people upstairs to watch dubs so they can't come in the back door, and make sure you've got the coverage. Skinny stairs isn't so much of a big deal when the point's downstairs because you can just have people glancing back at it. Make sure you have people upstairs watching dubs and downstairs watching all of these doors down here, which these doors are just numbers. This is door one where I'm standing now. Door 2 is over here, where I'm at now, and door 3 is here. I think Skinny Stairs is called door 4, but usually people just call out getting a push on Skinny, and that's kind of understood. But it does help to know the numbers of these doors, so if you're getting a push from any of these doors, Max Crash coming in door 2. You know where to focus fire. You focus it right out this door. So this is another one of those buildings that does have a lot of doors. Again, you don't want to go outside this building. You can push out depending on where the spawn room is, where their logistics are, what's going on. But generally, there's so many doors in this building and it's so huge, you don't want to lose your entire platoon outside because you will lose this building. It's very easy to push and has a lot of directions to push from. Any questions about the powerhouse? Uh, oh. Something I do want to add uh, before anything else happens. Uh, you said on fat stairs that there's a line where you can just have uh, have your soul stationed so you don't get uh, your body exposed. Skinny stairs, I'd say this line right here is would be like the same angle. So your body, not your uh, whole body is exposed to your uh, enemy fire. And you're still able to go for the headshot. Yeah, it kind of is there. Skinny stairs works a little bit differently though because most of the time there's going to be a baby gate here and somebody with a mana turret sitting right behind it shooting out. So yeah. precise coverage on skinny stairs is not as important because really you can only feel like three people in this doorway. And I'm usually like this crouching down shooting around a baby gate to shoot out. But it's a good tip because most pushes come from fat stairs. They don't want to funnel somebody through a small door like skinny. They want to funnel people in through fat stairs. So this line here that you're standing at to get those headshots, that is an important one. Um, you know, you're going to have your NGs with the turrets up here like this, which is fantastic, but the people that are in infantry, it's best that they stand back behind this line to get those headshots. Yep. Uh, one thing I'd like to add for uh, for these doors up here, near the fat stairs, especially if the point room's in this room, uh, I would never tell you to put baby gates at these doors right here. Yeah, no. Baby gates on the interior these... doors, not a good idea. Yeah, this th these doors specifically just stop your platoon or your squad from spreading out into this hallway and covering skinny and fat. Yeah, it, it's not a good idea to put baby gates in interior doors. Generally, as a rule, there are some cir circumstances where it is okay, but generally in doorways you want to keep baby gates to the exterior doors to block their pushes from coming in, and again, to contain your cats from flowing out as quickly and as massively as they will. So I do actually have a question about the doors as well. So I hear a lot of people um, say like, "Oh, don't put, don't put uh, the gates in, in the doorways." So for the for the doorways, like, how far back should you put the gates so it defends the your guys very well, but they can't actually be used by the enemy very effectively? I would say for public platoon leading, it's fine to put the baby gates in the doorways. You're trying to yeah. help herd your cats and contain them where you want them. So any kind of barrier you put to them wandering around where they're not supposed to be, in my book, is a plus in public platoon leading. I know that some uh, groups like B-Way or Hunter Killers, they've got their own very minute rules for running their squads and platoons. That's very much more micro-tactics than general platoon leading requires in a public platoon setting. Router locations. Uh, router locations. Um... I, I have a suggestion for a router location that has worked great for my outfit in the past, and that is skinny. Right in the skinny door 
skinny hallway right here. That's a kind of place to put it. Uh, you, you can put like a whole bunch of stuff on top of it, um, including, say, a uh, flash. And it will hold, especially in bases where um, skinny is facing away from the enemy spawn room, like in Dock, a southern post. Um, yeah. Those bases, I think this one will, will work. There's a few different places in a powerhouse where you can make a router work. That's one spot. Um, where I'm standing is another spot, depending on if they've got multiple servers in here blocking some of the flow of grenades and stuff. Um, this back corner where this point is, I've seen it there quite a bit, and it works very well. Again, depending on where servers are set up here and these panels are set up, it offers a lot of organic cover. Um, sometimes downstairs works very well, too, depending. There's some of these powerhouses where the skinny door is closed. It's not open. So right in this skinny doorway, a router's perfect. It's got some natural coverage once again, and it's not easy to get to to kill off. Sometimes this corner works. You have to look at the individual building and judge it for what's inside here already and look for the cover that's already built in and go from there and put your baby gates up and build on that. And yes, Bazoon had a very good point. The yellow line here inside of buildings, if you aim your gun at that when you shoot, it's pretty much guaranteed to be a headshot. It's at headshot level. So if you train yourself to hold your gun at that level, you're going to get headshots up one side and down the other. It's pretty much guaranteed. Can you repeat that one? Sorry. The yellow lines on the walls. See how there's a yellow stripe? Okay, all over I got the wall. you. Thanks. That's pretty much headshot level, yeah. Most buildings have that. Not all, but most of them do. So if you can train yourself to be at that level, you're training yourself to do headshots. Pretty much a lot of new players like to look straight down. Not straight down, but they look down and they're running around like that instead of having their crosshair up a little bit, which would help them greatly. But this is kind of like a guideline for that. Absolutely, absolutely. 